Hello, Ubuntu's from around the world. My name is Kais, and I'm 12 years old, and I live in Montreal, Canada. Welcome to our Ubuntu Zoom session, where me and my co-host, Ismael, who also lives in Montreal, will be interviewing our guest change maker, Wimpy Diokta Koto. Wimpy is a prominent business leader from Indonesia who invests and supports entrepreneurs in a number of ways, from being a mentor, mentor to serving as an advisor to entrepreneurship programs, to being a startup competition judge. Wimpy's work links to several sustainable development goals, especially to goal number eight and goal number nine which are decent work and economic growth and industry innovation and infrastructure. Ismail and I will ask questions to Wimpy about his background, his journey, his work, his skills, and his impact. So my first question is you founded and named uh, your company, Warder in Oxford. What does that, like, how did you come up with the name? What does it relate to? Okay, the name relates to the streets that intersect in London, where I had my first office, uh, which is Wardour Street, as well as Oxford Street at Soho in the UK. Isn't Oxford like a university? Oxford is a university in the United Kingdom. It's a, it's a shire, it's a shire. So there's a place called Oxford Shire, um, and there's a very famous university called the University of Oxford. But in London, it's actually a street. It's one of the main streets uh, between like there's Regent Street as well as Oxford Street. So have you been to London? No. You haven't? Okay. Well, when you go there, I'm sure you'll go. There's lots of toy shops and lots of amazing restaurants and stuff all around that area. Okay. What do you think are the skills required to be a great entrepreneur and how do you learn to be an entrepreneur? Like, okay. Yeah. The most important skills that you need to have as an entrepreneur um, is just the curiosity of I think it's a mixture of a lot of different skills and a lot of different characteristics right for example to have the curiosity of Elon Musk would be great to have the pragmatism and vision of Bill Gates to have the ambition of Jeff Bezos to have the willingness to fail like Who's, who do you think is willing to fail? Um, I would say somebody, like scientists are always willing to fail, right? Because they're always experimenting. There's always that element of trial and error. Um, and so always be willing to fail is, is a very key um, uh, characteristic of being an entrepreneur. But in terms of skills, you need to be entrepreneurial which means that um, you're always looking for opportunities. Wherever there's a problem, there's also an opportunity. That's the essence of being an entrepreneur. Um, you need to be resilient, which means that whenever problems come your way, whenever challenges come your way, you're able to be very strong ab about it and you're not willing to give in and, 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 uh, and, and just surrender. Another skill of being an entrepreneur is that you need to be able to network um, and socialize with people and connect with people because one person can't change the world and one person can't build a particular technology platform or launch a particular product. You need to work together with people. So networking is an important part of that. And probably another one uh, is the skill of... Um, being able to uh, have a vision of what's, what's to come next in the world and being always on top of the crest of the wave. So being able to lead the trend, that would be very vital. All right. Okay. Um, so I know that you've invested in a lot of things. What do you think you made the most money out of or... What do you think had the best impact on you? <laughs> I mean, that's a very direct question, isn't it, Mr. Mm -hmm. Young Anderson Cooper? Um, okay, so I've invested in a lot of different companies. Uh, I think the best thing, one of the best things that I've ever done is that um, I used to be very shy about my investments in terms of, you know, I would put my money here, there, like at different uh, places. But one of the things that I've done recently is that I've launched my own brand called Wempy Dr. Koto 
um, and that uh, and I've invested in the food business. I've invested in uh, furniture. I've invested in um, beverages as well as um, what else have I got? I got fashion line. I have got um, uh, geez organic products. So I've got a lot of different products that I've invested in all under my name brand. Um, and this year we're launching a record company. So I'm in the midst of recording albums with different artists. So we're gonna be launching that. So that should be on Apple Music as well as Spotify very soon in the next few months. Um, and also uh, art. So we're investing in a lot of art right now too. So there's a lot of different products that I'm, in, I'm investing in. I think probably the, um, the, the, the two biggest investments that, that are working out really well are property investments as well as in the food business, the, the, the range of companies and brands that I've invested in. Yeah. Hmm. What is the hardest challenge? Like, what is the hardest challenge you have had as a entrepreneur so far? The hardest challenge I've had um, is that you've got to be able to take everything with a grain of salt, I believe. When you're an entrepreneur, you're always going to be open for criticism. You're going to be, you're going to have to be open to suggestions and advice from other people. Uh, you're going to have to be open to even um, when it comes to fake news, you're going to have to be open to a lot of different challenges that people work for companies or people who aren't in the limelight or people who um, are doing more private work. Uh, they don't need to, um, uh, you know, they won't experience. But when it when, when you're a public figure or when you're an entrepreneur, you've got to be ready for a lot of things that's just going to come your way and just hit you like a, you know, like, 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 like a snowball out of nowhere. And you're either going to like fall and, and drown under all of the weight of the snow or the rain, or you're going to thrive and be able to grow from that. Okay. Okay. So how did COVID affect your work? So I was very lucky right um COVID being a very unfortunate uh you know virus and disease that's just you know spread rapidly all around the world I've been very fortunate in that I managed to evolve a lot of aspects of my company uh as and when it hit so roughly on March 20th I was at um a city called uh well uh, an island called Bali in Indonesia. I was there for a conference, an, a, royal, uh, a regional oil and gas conference, uh, when it was announced that there was COVID in Indonesia. So my team and I, we decided to work on a lot of things very urgently, and we built a new division, which is the health and safety division of our company. So as part of that, we um, created products such as hazmat suits. Uh, in Indonesia, it's called alat pelindung diri, which is which is APD um, and do you, do you know what hazmat suits are yeah what? so we created yeah. a lot of that and we created hand sanitizers we created masks so we were able to invest our money in um, uh, you know that had that was in other industries and put it into the health and safety sector. And that's where we continue to flourish also. So I'm pretty lucky that I wasn't one of the entrepreneurs who just collapsed within, you know, the whole sort of pandemic economy uh, that I was able to just, you know, evolve, evolve our products and services because I know a lot of my friends have lost a lot of money uh, because their restaurants have gone bankrupt their businesses, which were in malls and um, people in the airline and transportation industry, my friends in the, you know, the airline and, you know, all those sorts of industries, they've lost a lot of money. Um, and so I'm pretty fortunate that I managed to evolve in business. That's what we call pivoting. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how would you describe your childhood on Indonesia and what, who impacted you and shaped you to be the person you have become? Okay, so 
I was only in Indonesia for a few years of my life, probably till I was about three or four. I, I forget oh. the exact age that I was at in Indonesia. Uh, but I spent a lot of time uh, with my aunt, who has become like my second mother, as well as my grandparents. So, you know, they obviously they had taken good care of me, uh, but all, you know, like my, my mother and father. So I was actually born in Indonesia. I was born in a little village called Padang Panjang in Indonesia. But when I, uh, you know, when, 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 when I was about three or four years old, we moved to Sydney in Australia. And that's where I got most of my, well, that's where I got almost all of my education actually. So I was at kindergarten as well as primary school as well as high school, university, where I completed my bachelor's and master's degree, all at um, uh, Sydney. But I also oh. uh, went to the Think School of Creative Leadership um, at Amsterdam, where I studied with um, his mother, right? So. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah, I studied in Amsterdam. Um, well, we studied in Amsterdam what year was that in 2014. We studied uh, creative leadership, so how to be a creative leader, basically. Um, and it was a program where we would fly in and out of Amsterdam every few, I think every, you know, like every three months or so or, or, or four months or so. Um, for a period of about one and a half, one year or one and a half years, I, I, I forget exactly, but we did have to fly. So I was like living in Jakarta at that stage. So I used to fly back and forth uh, between there and Amsterdam whenever they would have what we call course modules. So we wouldn't have to completely relocate to Amsterdam, but we would have to fly back and forth. So we would complete the modules. It was a great school. It was probably one of the best things that I ever did in life because, you know, like at school, right, you're completely graded, right? You'd get an A or a B or a C, or you'd get like, you know, 40% if you fail or 50% or 100%. At our school, at Think, we didn't get graded at all. We basically, you know, just went th through it, you know, pretty much just, um, just studying and learning from each other rather than trying to achieve grades. You've done a lot of jobs. What do you think your favorite one was? My favorite one is uh, my current one, which I've been doing for the past 10, hang on, how many years has it been? Probably about 14 years of my life, which is being an entrepreneur because you get to do what you want to do and you don't have to, um, you know, you don't have to wait for instructions from anybody. You don't have to to do projects that are assigned to you. So I think being an entrepreneur is my favorite job and you know, nobody's gonna tell you what time you have to work. So, you know, I can go to the office at you know, midday if I want and leave at 1, 1 p.m. if I want. But actually the, the, the fact of the matter is that as an entrepreneur, you end up working from like morning through to night. There's no such thing as, um, you know, nine till five as an entrepreneur. You end up working really long, late hours. So uh, when is like a good time to start a company? Is it better to start early or to start after we have like experience in this thing? No, I think it's a great time to start early. You guys could start a company. I don't know what the legal age is to start a company. It might be 16 or 18 in Canada. Is I'm it, not sure. What age is it there? Isn't it like 14 or 16? Maybe. I have I'm no sure. idea. I could search. Well, maybe you could Google that sometime, but I think it's a great idea to start a company as young as possible. It may not be legally registered, right? Because my company is legally registered, right? Which means yeah. I have to pay taxes. Um, but with yourselves, uh, you don't, I, I, I don't believe you need to set up the limited company or the proprietary limited company as soon as possible. You can just run a a company right which means that yourselves can be the founders of the company you can build what the objectives are you can build what the mission is what the vision is uh and create products i mean you could create lemonade if you wanted to you could create um you know what what, what are your favorite things to create um i don't know i don't have a favorite thing and uh, i just googled it it's 18 years old for it to be oh you just business. googled it and it's 18 
Okay. Oh. Well, maybe you like to make. Do you like to make T-shirts? Do you like to draw? Do you like to? Not what do you like really. to do? I like to. I like to draw sometimes. You like to draw? Well, okay. So, if I was good at drawing, which I'm not, like I'm a really bad drawer, but if I did, then let me ask you a question. How would you make money from your drawings? Art, painting. You would sell them. True. Okay, so that's one thing that you could do. You could paint it on a piece of paper and frame it, right? Yes. Because if you sell it on a piece of paper, it might only cost about five dollars, right? Yes. But then if you frame it, how much do you think you could sell it for? I don't know, like twenty. Fifty. Yeah, possibly. If it's a really good frame, you could possibly sell it for twenty, right? Now that's one thing that you can do. What else can you do with your art? Do you think? Uh, can it be like music art? Yeah, it can be music art also, right? But if it's if we're talking about drawings, for example, what you can do is that you can get that drawing, you can take a photo of that drawing and make it into what is a high resolution file, and then you can put it on mugs, for example, right? Coffee mugs. And oh. then you can sell coffee mugs. True? Yes. You can or make t-shirts like that. Put, exactly. Very good. You can print it on t-shirts too. Right? You could also make stickers. Right? What else yeah. could you... You could make a lot of things. You could basically you could, make you everything. Make, you could make everything. That's what you call merchandise art. So you get anything that is like merchandise. You can even put it on coffee, uh, on mugs, on tumblers. You can put it on bags. You can put it on anything. And then you can sell it. Instead of selling it for $5, you can sell a bag for like $25. You can sell a mug for $8. You can sell a... Um, you, can, you can even put your art on a pillow or on a blanket. Or you could put it on, on a book. Sell for like you could put like the, the cover page. And the drawings inside for a book. You could be you could be an illustrator. That's it. You could That's do anything. What you can do. But what advice would you give to kids who want to like be an entrepreneur? What advice would I give them? Okay. Yeah. All right. What advice would I give to a kid who wants to be an entrepreneur? Is number one, get a mentor. Okay. So find somebody who um you really respect you kind of you shouldn't idolize anybody i don't think but somebody that you really look up to like a hero of yours um and find out if they can mentor you because a mentor has gone through a lot of challenges in their life like in building up a business um and so we'll be able to give you really good advice for example i'm a mentor to a lot of different entrepreneurs and so what they do is that they will learn with me and then they will, um, all the mistakes that I've made in life, you know, they won't make the same mistakes because um, one, one great thing about mentors is that uh, they've gone through so much in their own lifetimes, both, both personally as well as professionally, that uh, a mentee, will be able to like stand on the shoulder of that mentor and start their business or start their uh, ventures at that level rather than at ground level, because you've already learned from all the successes and failures of mentor. Like you said, it's good to have a mentor. Did you have a mentor? Yeah, I did. I've had many mentors actually. I've been very fortunate, but I'd, I'd say the, the two best mentors that I've had, um, are uh, well firstly uh is my boss when i was about 21 or so years old her name was mira makozik and um she was the vice president of american express in sydney australia and so she was so smart when it comes to like branding and marketing and uh you know building and launching products she was amazing and so she mentored me when I was at American Express in Australia and my other mentor uh, his name is Sanjay Basin and Sanjay was my boss uh, when I was working at an advertising agency and I learned a lot from him 
uh, because he was a great networker. He was great with people. He was always a really amazing, uh, had an amazing presence and spirit. And he was always a really good boss. It's very difficult to find a good boss, but who is a really good boss, very empathetic, very understanding and very supportive. And so when you're young, you need mentors like that to guide your way. And I had another amazing mentor uh, named Liam Winston, and he was just, um, you know, very much like uh, Sanjay Basin in that he would be very encouraging and supportive um, and always was, you know, a, a, a great rock whenever I was having problems with work. And so one of the most important things as an entrepreneur and as a young, you know, as, as a young human being uh, that you guys are, uh, getting a mentor is probably the, the most important advice that I can give, yeah. So thank you everybody for everything that we learned today. And please tell your friends about Aboot and share social media links with them. And also go to aboot.co to learn about opportunities to collect digital badges and help us draw down carbon.